All right, welcome everybody. We are back here with um, kind of finishing up on weather front, and we're going to go ahead and discuss the uh, wind systems today, a little bit wind systems with our short lesson today, considering that it is an early release day. Um, and let's go ahead and do I have any volunteers? We're going to forget we're going to do projects later this week. I'm going to figure, I'm going to post about that and have you guys research while we're uh, getting into projects, stuff about planets. That'll be Wednesday, Thursday. We've also got the Unit 6 vocab that is going to be due. It's posted online on Canvas. That'll be due this Friday, due this Friday. Uh, but let's go ahead. Um, do I have answers or volunteers for letters A, B, C, D, or E um, regarding our weather fronts from last week? Anybody would like to answer A, B, C, or D? Please include that in the chat. Although it looks like I do have on oh, the names. I'll make sure we got a headphone right there. Appreciate that. I know you guys use it for the Go Blue. Then Javante, you're going to get headphones. Okay, awesome. Um, Angel, one help me out with uh, cold and warm front for letters. Appreciate it. Letters A and B. Yeah, yeah. So what what line is the cold front? Yep, blue line and triangles. And what kind of weather do we get with that? Did you happen to read into that? No? Okay. So then no worries. Again, I know some of you guys weren't here, so I'll help you out a bit. For cold fronts, we're going to say, A, hey, blue triangles with severe storms. So cold fronts, again, the cold air is going to replace the warm air. Um, that is going to bring your thunderstorms, your tornadoes, this and that, right? Thunderstorms and tornadoes. And then warm front. Uh, Angel, did you have the symbols or know what, we, what we'd say for warm front? Yep. And for that, instead of uh, cold air replacing warm air, it's now going to be the opposite. Warm air replaces cold air, but instead of severe rain, we're going to get moderate rainfall. Moderate rainfall. Okay. So again, we get blue triangles, severe storms, uh, red half circles, and, and like, so... I got a nice rainy day without the lightning and thunderstorms, right? That'd be a, a warm front. Um, I know I didn't go over this with our uh, class. So I'm just going to give it to you off the bat. Trough is going to be the brown hash mark line you see at number five on the image. And that is going to be giving us uh, more just like overcast. So cloudy and rainy. Give you guys a second for that. More cloudy and rainy. That is letter C, the answer to letter C. Give you guys a second. So if you guys um, can, can, can get the pattern down, you can notice that, hey, there's rain in all of them. Yes, yeah, so all of them are going to bring rain, but it's just different varieties of rain, different varieties of rain, right? Okay. Um, and just in case you guys didn't see this in your notes, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up because I might not have shown it on the previous, during the previous week, right? Okay, so one second. Okay, let's see, one second. So for trough, uh, we can see here, uh, oh, one second, Sorry, hold on. So again, on your trough section, hopefully you guys, again, take a picture of it if you're online. That was on the, you guys took a picture of it already for the five uh, weather front sections. This is on the bottom of page five where you had your weather fronts, guys. Again, it's an area of low pressure. And you've got to remember from an experience in person, what does low pressure let clouds do? Let's them grow, right? So low pressure lets it grow. And uh, this is just going to cause like overcast, cloudy, rainy weather, like I explained before. Anybody need a moment for that? Again, make sure to have a picture of that. That's the bottom of page five, which all of us should have set up. Um, again, if you were not here for that day, I will post that YouTube video um, for you to get that at a later time. No worries. No worries. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and get back to where we left off then uh, with uh, letter D. Letter D. Um, Javante, did you maybe want to help us out with a stationary front? What makes that unique from your picture earlier? They'd be on page five, but I'm not sure. I don't think you were here, so we'll get you caught up a little bit. Oh, you've got it. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. So it's got blue triangles and red circles. Are they going the same or the opposite direction? Opposite direction. And did you happen to remember or find what kind of weather we had with that? 
Oh, no. Okay. I think yeah, that was the part we had to go over. It's going to be a slow moving storm. Okay. Which means if it rains a lot, Javante, what could happen to the area? When you get too much rain, what could, what could that cause? When water overloads the system and everything. We, we call those floods, right? Floods. So long-term rain and flooding would be the issue with that one, right? Long-term rain and flooding. Okay. And then last one, uh, let's see, Javante, what was the symbol for uh, the occluded? Yep, and then opposite or same direction? Same direction, exactly. So with the occluded, it's going to be the purple triangles and circles going the same direction. And with that, we instead get uh, heavy wind. We get heavy rain, but also very windy. So not as severe as cold fronts, but still maybe your second most severe, right? So each has to do. Each of these has to do with warm air versus cold air, right? So in a cold front, who wins, the cold air or the warm air? The cold air wins when there's a cold front. What about with the warm front? The warm air wins with the warm front, right? And uh, again, with some of these others, we see with what about stationary? Is that is that is one win or is that a tie? Stationary is a tie, right? Stationary is a tie. And then you're going to see with occluded, it's like the cold front doesn't just win the battle; the cold front ends up overtaking the warm air, right? So, Javante, as soon as you're ready, I'm going to show some quick key visuals. And then uh, we'll check out a quick video and then we'll move on to our first card question of the day. Okay. I will go to table of contents because I know I think some of us weren't here Friday. So I'll get you guys all situated with that. Okay. And let me go ahead and update attendance. I just had a student join us. One second. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead. I, I do want to quickly show. Uh, video, but let me kind of go walk you through again for those who weren't here uh, last week, right? So we talk about fronts, right? Cold front. We see the cold air pushing out the warmer. You guys see that? So cold air wins that battle. But with the warm front, now we see the warm air winning. The warm air shoves away the cold air, right? And then with stationary, it's a tie, right? Cold air tied with warm air, which is why it moves so slow. And then um, occluded. The cold air dominates the warm air. Let's check out a quick video included with that. One second, one second. All right, one, one second. I just got to pull up one thing. Let's see. I'm a, yep, here it is. I switched from State Farm. Oh, one second. Of this site. They have your cards ready for our first question. We're going to be using paper cards instead of the plastic cards today. Looks like we're all good to go. So let's do our first question of today. Again, the highest I've had a class score on this question is an 80%. I want to see if you guys can be above that. Um, with the numbers, I think that's very possible. Um, again, if you are online, make sure to add your answers in the chat as a direct message to me. Again, make sure to answer your questions in the chat as a message to me. Uh, let's go. Let me pull up what I've got. Uh oh Where's it at? Where's it at? Okay. So for our question that's now on the screen... Okay, uh, based on this map, Austin, Texas, let's take a look. I've got Austin, Texas. Okay, now, it, is it on the coast or surrounded by land? Surrounded by land. That's one thing to think about. And is it closer to the pole up here or the equator? Closer to the pole or the equator? Think about those when you answer this question. Okay, based on the map, which type of air mass most influences Austin, Texas? Is it A, maritime tropical, B, maritime polar, 
C, continental tropical, or D, continental polar. See what you guys have, both in-person students with their cards and my online students with their answers. Okay? All right, Irina, thank you for your input. Appreciate it, Irina. Again, do your best because these are how your questions on your next quiz or test are going to look. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lakia. Appreciate it as a direct message. I still need other students to please add their answers in the chat for participation. So I know you're participating. Daniela, thank you so much. Great job, Daniela. Got it right. Lakia, great job. Got it right. Arena, I'll let you know later because yours is to everybody, so I can't give away the answer just yet. I still need more people. I think I got a few more people. Let's see, Yorkies. A um, few more people who still need to give me answers. Thank you, Yorkies. Great, great. Anybody else? Anybody else I'm missing? Okay. Uh, so let's go. The answer is going to be... Letter C, fantastic job, Diego, Yorkies, Daniela, Irina, let's see, um, Lakia, fantastic job, everybody, that is correct. Again, knowing whether it's near the equator or the pole, that makes it tropical, and then we know because it's close to the equator, and, um, oh, oops, I'm giving away other stuff, and knowing whether it's uh, close, uh, land, surrounded by land or near the ocean. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's do um, our quick video questions to kind of segue our topic for today. One second. Oh, did I lose it? One second, guys. Let me look for this. Where are my video questions at? Uh-oh. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Oh, here we go. I found it. Okay. Um, so for our video questions, I only have two video questions today. Uh, number one. What are jet streams? And number two, what causes Earth's wind? I'm going to give you guys a moment to write that down. That should be on the top of page seven. Your title of page seven should be what's called wind systems. Title of page seven should be what's called wind systems. Give you guys a moment to, to get that situated. And title of page seven should be wind systems, wind systems. Number one, what are jet streams? And two, what causes Earth's wind? We'll regroup here in a moment. All right, so um, before we start our first video, because our in-person students are ready to go, again, if you need more time, please take a picture as we move along. Um, do you guys know why they're called maybe jet streams? Any ideas on that? Why are they called maybe jet streams? They move very fast. That's an idea, right? Any other ideas, Angel, that you wanted to add? Maybe it has something to do with water. Certainly, that right. Maybe, uh, potentially, you're, if you're out, if you're out in it too long, it causes you to, to get some burn. Sun, the sun, right? Sunburn, right? So the sun is the driving force. And get this: does water and rock heat up the same speed? No, right. Also, does the sun heat up the earth evenly? No, right. Some parts, like the equator, get hotter than the poles. That's what causes wind, guys. The uneven heating from the sun due to water slash land heating up at different rates. Okay, so what, what causes wind? Well, when air gets hot, it rises. And what swoops in to replace it? The cool air. That's what causes wind. That's the answer to number two. 
Answer the number two. Answer the number three on page seven. Page seven. Okay. So that concludes our answers for today. I do you want us to write out a chart and a diagram at the end of the day. So we'll take a few bright first this already we'll do that. And that includes our answers again for both our video questions, which is the beginning of our notes on page seven, wind systems. Should be on page seven for wind systems. All right. Any questions, comments left before we move on? We till uh, Chavante and Angel are ready. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and go to our next step. What I want you guys to do is go to page, uh, still stay on page seven, go in the middle area of that. And I want you guys to go ahead and just write this little chart here. So if you can tell, remember, we talked about five different types of fronts. Now we've got to know three different types of winds, three different types of winds. So go ahead uh, we, this top part we already did. Don't worry about that. That was with our videos. So we're going we're gonna to write this chart. And then afterwards, to finish up for the day, we're going to write this diagram down here that goes with it. So here we see the diagram. Okay. Here's the chart. So go ahead. Let's start off with our chart. I'm going to give you guys a minute or two, maybe two minutes, and we'll regroup and we'll talk about it. Again, go ahead. We should be writing the chart. The three types of wind. These include trade winds, westerlies, and Easterlies. You've probably heard of those a little bit before. We'll talk about them in detail here in a minute or two as soon as Javante and Angel are ready. No rush, no rush. Again, this is the uh, middle of page seven. The middle of page seven. And then we've got 10 minutes left of class. Looks like I've got a chat here. Somebody in the chat having issues seeing something, maybe. What page? Uh, this is on Tatiana. This is on page seven, where we just wrote we just wrote the video questions on page seven. This goes below that on page seven. Good question, Tatiana. Thank you. Oh, and my bad again. I should, if it's a message, I'll make sure not to say the name next time. All right, so let's kind of discuss the different three types of wind. We've got trade winds, okay? Again, call trade winds because back when they were doing discovering all the, the Americas, they did a lot of trading of goods. Uh, this was in the tropic regions where it's hot, where the all the all the islands are at, and um, Central America, and and all that it was in the tropic region. You'll, that'll make sense when you see the diagram here. Um, and then the cells with these are Hadley cells. So I always say like maybe uh, the hot tropics. The hot tropics, right? Uh, that helps me remember, uh, let's see, uh, trade winds and then tropics, the hot tropics. And I know it's Hadley cells, Hadley hot. Um, next are prevailing westerlies. Again, if you see the word westerlies, that doesn't mean it's going west. It means it comes from the west. So it's going east, coming from the west. Um, that is in the, temp the temperate region, and that is with feral cells. That's the middle kind of area where it's not too hot or too cold. I always say... Uh, 
uh, again, West Tampa Ferraris. Um, if that helps me remember like the acronym for it, right? So, or um, where's the ferret or, you know, where's the um, funnel cake? I, I don't know. Just whatever works for you, whatever makes sense to you. Okay. Um, and then lastly, we got Easterlies coming from the east, going to the west. I always say pep. So polar, Easterlies, polar. Pep for like Pepsi. Pepsi's blue as well. Pepsi. Okay. Um, so again, the three winds, we need to get all curving because of the Coriolis effect. Because again, the earth is, is spinning. Earth is spinning, right? Any questions that? Again, if you need more time, I'll give you 20 seconds to take a picture. Otherwise, we're going to move on to our last section. Oh, actually, before I show the last thing, we're a little ahead of time compared to my other classes. I'm gonna go, let's go ahead. Let's, eh, we'll do the question last because we may need the, the whole time, the rest of the period to finish this. So um, I'm assuming you guys all have a picture. So let's go to our last section of phase seven. I need you guys to make a diagram, make the wind systems diagram. I'm going to give you two minutes for that. Then we're going to re talk about it, do a question and call it a day. Call it a day. Again, last thing I need you guys to write at the bottom of page seven. You're going to need this stuff for the, tomorrow's Go Blue. You're going to need this for tomorrow's Go Blue. Again, for my in-person students, I have rulers. Um, I have a color pencils if you want to color coordinate, but you don't need to color coordinate at all. It's just there for organization. Again, please write this at the bottom of page seven. This is the last thing we need to do. We're illustrating the three types of wind and their air cells. Give you guys a, give you guys a minute or two. So my eighth person is already. Just double check the chat. Nobody's in the chat, so we're all good. All right, guys, so make sure to draw your arrows the same way you see on the screen here uh, because it does show the direction of the wind. Again, there's a northern hemisphere and a southern hemisphere of our planet, which we'll be learning about, right? Um, now, are we in the northern or the southern hemisphere? Any ideas for my students in person? Okay, so are we in North or South America? You're good? It's all good. We in North or South America? Yeah, Northern America. So are we in the Northern or Southern Hemisphere? We're in the Northern Hemisphere. So continents like South America, um, Australia, um, Africa, those are in the Southern Hemisphere. That's a whole other, other part of the planet we're not, uh, that we're not on, right? Um, so again, this is just uh, showing kind of the reflection of that. Trade winds go in the equator. They're towards the equator. Uh, trade winds in the tropics towards the equator. Hadley cells temperate are, uh, have westerlies, which include feral cells. And easterlies uh, include in the polar polar region, which are also known as polar cells. Polar cells. Okay. Um, when my in-person students are ready, we'll do our last question of the day. That does conclude our notes for today, but do not sign out just yet. Let me double check attendance real quick while you guys are getting our question ready. And as soon as I have Angel and Javante ready, we'll do our last question. I'm feeling confident that you guys will do well.
Okay, no rush, no rush. All right, uh, let's do our last question of today. All right, um, oh, let me let me exit out of that. Real quick before the bell rings on us in about two minutes, one second. Okay, um, let's do this first one. Okay, which type of surface winds are found within the polar region either? This should be easy. A, trade winds, B, westerlies, C, easterlies, or D, feral winds? Uh, what is the answer? Uh, go ahead and put your answers in the chat. We just talked about it, just talked about it. Or, um, and then use your cards if you're in person. Again, which of these is found in the polar region? Should be a piece of cake question. Okay, again, I need people in my chat to answer. My in-person students are all good to go. They know the answer. All right, and what was your answer, Javante? Okay, do you have anybody in the chat? Anybody in the chat? Thank you, Irina. Great job. Diego, fantastic job. Got it right. Thank you, Lakia. I right, got about 10 seconds to answer, 10 seconds. Okay. All right, thank you, Yorkies. Thank you. Okay, answer guys is going to be, again, participation guys, make sure you participate in that because that, that ties into our grade. Uh, letter C, polar easterlies. Polar is the answers. Everybody, uh, attendance is good. You were all good to sign out. I will see you guys again tomorrow at 145. Be ready for class again tomorrow at 145. You may log out. You may log out. Vocab due Friday. Vocab due Friday. Have a good one.